Hello, my name is Cindy Pimenti and I'm a gastroenterology fellow at New York Presbyterian Columbia. And I'm here today to talk about bariatric surgery in the peritransplant period. When does bariatric surgery become important to discuss in patients with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and non-alcoholic steatohepatitis? Introducing bariatric surgery in patients with NAFLD and NASH, specifically with BMIs greater than 35, should be happening early. Currently, the mainstay of treatment for NAFLD and NASH is weight loss through lifestyle interventions. However, only about a third of obese patients achieve a long-term meaningful weight loss. Almost one-fifth of patients currently listed for liver transplant have a BMI greater than 35, and as NAFLD and NASH continue to increase in our communities, having discussions about bariatric surgery is going to become even more important. What methods of bariatric surgery should be considered for patients with NAFLD and NASH? Typically, sleeve gastrectomy and ruin y gastric bypass are the two most commonly performed and studied methods. Both are performed almost exclusively laparoscopically. Previously, laparoscopic adjustable gastric banding was common, but it's largely been replaced by sleeve gastrectomy. Are there differences between these two methods? Yes. With laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy, a tubular stomach is created by removing the majority of the greater curvature of the stomach, restricting the stomach's expansion. In a Roux Y gastric bypass, you create an entirely separate small gastric pouch, which is then anastomosed to a Roux limb. The small gastric pouch is restrictive, and then the new small bowel configuration leads to mild malabsorption and is also associated with gut hormone changes that improve metabolism. Weight loss is slightly greater following laparoscopic Roux & Y gastric bypass compared to the sleeve gastrectomy, but the Roux & Y gastric bypass does have higher rates of postoperative complications and need for reoperations. In patients for whom you are considering future need for liver transplantation, would you consider one method over another? Laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy is typically the preferred surgical approach. There are shorter operative times and less need for reoperations with overall similar weight loss. Also, a preserved GI tract allows for easier access to the biliary tree for future operations and procedures. Is bariatric surgery safe for patients with cirrhosis or advanced fibrosis? In patients with no to minimal fibrosis, bariatric surgery is considered safe. However, in patients with advanced fibrosis and cirrhosis, especially with portal hypertension, bariatric surgery hasn't been as well studied. So the answer is it depends. What does the safety depend on? The surgical risk typically depends on the degree of liver decompensation, particularly the presence of portal hypertension. The safety of bariatric surgery in child's PU class B and C has not been thoroughly investigated, and patients with higher MELD scores typically had increasing complications. Any patient with advanced fibrosis or cirrhosis considering bariatric surgery should be referred to a high volume liver transplant center to minimize risks. What about bariatric surgery during transplant and post-transplant? Studies are small and limited. In some studies, sleeve gastrectomy performed simultaneously with liver transplantation does lead to more durable weight loss and improved metabolic risk factors. However, there are increased complications from two simultaneous operations. Following liver transplant in patients with recurrent steatosis, small studies have been conducted demonstrating significant weight loss and improvement in steatosis. But there have been some complications, including poor intake and malnutrition. In these complex situations, prospective studies to develop evidence-based guidelines are really needed. Thank you so much for listening. Please check out the full article entitled Bariatric Surgery in the Peritransplant Period on the Clinical Liver Disease website. And feel free to reach out on Twitter at spimenti with any additional questions or comments.